Tonight, the breaking news in New York City, the subway, two trains colliding, dozens injured, people pulled from the tracks, and the deadly school shooting, a student shooting several students and the principal. First, the images coming in right now, the frightening moments on the New York City subway, those two trains colliding on Manhattan's Upper West Side, ambulances rushing to the scene, passengers pulled from the tracks amid the smoke and the sparks. Ariel Reshef at the scene for us. Also breaking tonight, the deadly school shooting in Iowa. Police say a 17-year-old student opening fire just as school was starting in Perry, Iowa, outside Des Moines. Five students and the principal shot. A sixth grader killed. The others rushed to the hospital, and Rachel Scott is in Iowa for us. The major winter storm targeting New York City and the Northeast. Heavy snow, rain, potentially damaging winds. At this hour, at least 20 states now under winter alerts. The potential snow totals in New York and the Northeast, depending on the track, and Rob Marciano will show us. The Jeffrey Epstein case tonight, the newly unsealed court documents linked to Epstein, revealing the names of people who had various connections to him, including former presidents Clinton and Trump, magician David Copperfield, Michael Jackson, not accused of wrongdoing, but what the documents do claim. Aaron Katursky reporting tonight. Former President Trump in the scathing new report tonight from House Democrats revealing while he was in office, his businesses allegedly received millions from foreign governments, including China and Saudi Arabia. The response right here tonight. The Israel-Hamas war and this evening news on a daring secret operation freeing a Palestinian mother and her American brother-in-law inside Gaza. How many Americans remain there? Martha Raddatz reporting from the region. Back in the U.S. tonight, the alarming attack in court. A defendant who had just been sentenced lunges at the judge, flying over the bench. The horrific scene and news tonight on the judge's condition. The weight loss trend and tonight the diabetes drugs now being used for weight loss and the warning from the maker of two of those popular drugs. What they're telling patients and doctors tonight. Also this evening, the tributes pouring in tonight for a beloved star of a Disney classic. From the movies to Broadway, what a voice. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Thursday night. The deadly school shooting, a student shooting several students and the principal, and the other breaking story unfolding just before we came on tonight here in New York City, the subway, two trains colliding, multiple people injured, pulled from the tracks. The troubling images from underground just moments ago, one of those trains derailing. This all happened on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Riders jolted by the crash. Authorities at this hour saying at least two dozen injuries. Passengers describing being pulled from the tracks amid the smoke and the sparks. ABC's Ariel Reshef leading us off from the scene. Tonight, the frightening moments on the New York City subway. Two trains colliding on the Upper West Side, sending one car off the tracks. We stopped pretty hard. Um, everybody jumped up, trying to look around and see what was going on. Our train, like, kind of tilted to the side, and then everyone started panicking. About 300 riders departing the busy 96th Street station just around 3 p.m. when officials say one car of the number one train and a work train crashed at slow speed. These images show investigators on the tracks and in the derailed car. All of a sudden, like, the, like, like uh, there was like a rumble and like we, 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 like, we all screamed because we didn't know what happened. Shocked passengers escorted out of the cars and out of the station, reporting seeing sparks on the tracks and smoke filling the tunnel. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know if it was an attack. I didn't know what. I saw smoke and I just didn't know what was going to happen next. First responders quickly on scene. Two dozen passengers and the conductor with minor injuries, at least one taken away in a stretcher. Thankfully, this was low speed. We'll get to the bottom of this uh, and make sure that uh, whatever occurred doesn't happen again. David, that collision causing major complications on the busiest subway system in the country. More than three million people per day rely on the New York City subway for their commutes. David. The alarming moments on the subway just a short time ago. Ariel Reshef, thank you. The other breaking story at this hour, we're learning more about the deadly school shooting early this morning in Perry, Iowa. Police say a student shooter opening fire just before classes began this morning. The gunman police say a 17-year-old student who shot five students and a principal, a sixth grader, did not survive. The suspect then taking his own life. Police receiving the call of an active shooter at 7.37 this morning at the scene in seven minutes. Students rushed from the building. The students were returning for their first day of school 
after the Christmas and New Year's break. Rachel Scott in Perry, Iowa tonight. Tonight, a first day back to school shattered by gunfire. Units, we've got an active shooter situation at Perry High School. The calls to police from Perry High School, northwest of Des Moines, coming just after 7.30 a.m. Law enforcement swarming the school within seven minutes. Senior Rachel Cares was wrapping up band practice when her teacher told her to run. We heard four gunshots and we all jumped and just like we all looked at each other, didn't know what to do. And then I think we heard another one and then that's what made him like yell at us like run, go. The shooter has been identified as 17 year old Dylan Butler, a student at Perry High School. Butler was armed with a pump action shotgun and a small caliber handgun. Police say Butler, seen in this photo posted to social media before the shooting, shot and killed a sixth grader who was at the school for a breakfast program, shooting four more students and the principal before taking his own life. Ninth grader Anthony Ubaldo saw the suspect in the bathroom before the shooting. It's just traumatizing because honestly, he could have just killed me then and there and I wouldn't be here right now. Law enforcement sweeping the school, finding an improvised explosive device as terrified parents race to the scene. It is very tough. It's overwhelming. Like the pain in your heart is just overwhelming. Jody Kerf describing the moment she got a text from her daughter telling her that her stepson was shot in the back and the arm. He's in stable condition. It was absolutely horrifying. Like, that's one of the worst moments of my entire life. The shooting coming as students returned after winter break and just 11 days before the Iowa caucuses. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis saying he spoke to Iowa's governor after the shooting. DeSantis insisting it's up to the states to make schools safe, adding when it comes to gun control, he does not support infringing the rights of law-abiding citizens. Tonight in Perry, there are vigils planned for the victims. This senseless tragedy has shaken our entire state to the core, and I want this community to know that every Iowan stands with you. David, tonight we are learning the other five victims are being treated at a nearby hospital. One is in critical condition, the others are stable. We are just four days into this new year and there have already been four school shootings this year. David. Horrific scene there in Perry. Rachel Scott tonight. Thank you, Rachel. We turn next tonight to the Northeast, bracing for a major winter storm. New York City could see its first significant snowfall in two years. In fact, at least 20 states are now on alert at this hour for this storm. Senior meteorologist Rob Marciano back with us tonight with the timing and the track. And I know the track makes all the difference, Rob. It does, David, and this thing's going to speed up and really ramp up as it approaches the northeast. Now we have uh, winter storm watches that are posted from southern Maine all the way through the Catskills, central Pennsylvania, and down the Appalachians. The low gets into Texas tonight. Flakes fly across Kansas, a couple of inches there. Heavy rain in Houston tomorrow morning. And then most of the lift is down across the south. The heavy rain in Mississippi, Alabama, uh, Georgia, and the Carolinas Saturday morning. Now everything pushes up into marginally cold air, starts to snow in D.C. and Philly, quickly changes to rain, stays a little bit longer in snow along the parts of New York Saturday night into Sunday changes back to snow for just about everyone Sunday morning before it moves out of here Sunday afternoon. Problem is this is one of our computer models, one of our colder ones. Some of the warmer ones don't give much of any snow near the coastline and we have some seriously warm water temperatures. So a closer track will push some of that warm air inland and we could see nothing in New York. But anybody inland just a couple of miles, David, will see significant snow by Sunday morning. David Rob Marciano back with us tonight. Rob, thank you. We turn now to breaking news in the Jeffrey Epstein case tonight. The release of previously sealed court documents, including the names of people linked in some way to convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein, including former presidents Clinton and Trump, magician David Copperfield, Michael Jackson, among the many names, none accused of wrongdoing. But what the documents do claim with more documents released just moments ago. Here's Aaron Katursky. Tonight, newly unsealed court documents offer a who's who of people name-dropped in connection with Jeffrey Epstein, the notorious sex offender who hanged himself in jail while awaiting trial. Some had known associations with Epstein, like the actor Kevin Spacey, the magician David Copperfield, supermodel Naomi Campbell, and former presidents Trump and Clinton. None was accused of wrongdoing. Most of the names were contained in a May 2016 deposition of Johanna Schoberg, who worked for and traveled with Epstein for several years. She said she was flying to Atlantic City with Epstein when Jeffrey said, great, we'll call up Trump. There's no evidence in the documents that call ever took place. Schoberg identified Copperfield as a friend of Epstein's and was asked, did Copperfield ever discuss Jeffrey's involvement with young girls with you? 
She answered, he questioned me if I was aware that girls were getting paid to find other girls. Did he tell you any of the specifics of that? No. Some of the famous names seem to come out of the blue, like Michael Jackson, who Schoberg claimed she met at Epstein's Palm Beach home. Schoberg was asked, did you massage him? She answered, I did not. The documents were part of a long-settled defamation lawsuit alleged victim Virginia Jufre brought against Epstein's former companion, Glenn Maxwell. It's really important to the public interest to be able to see those documents that have been held for so long in the court file. Jufre made allegations claiming Maxwell and Epstein directed her to have sex with powerful men like former Senator George Mitchell, former Ambassador Bill Richardson, Hyatt Hotel Chairman Tom Pritzker, and on three occasions with Prince Andrew. All of the men have denied it. Prince Andrew settled a lawsuit with Jufre in 2022. We're now starting to see the information behind the trafficking scheme. Johanna Schoberg said in her deposition she was on a couch with Jufre, Prince Andrew, Maxwell and Epstein at his Upper East Side mansion when Andrew put his hand on my breast and they took a photo. That photo has never surfaced. No comment tonight from Prince Andrew. Another 19 documents have just been unsealed. David, there are scores more to go. David? Erica Tursky, back with us tonight. Thank you. Next to former President Trump and the scathing new report tonight from House Democrats revealing that while Trump was in office, his businesses allegedly received nearly $8 million from foreign governments, including China and Saudi Arabia. The Trump family's response tonight. And here's Jonathan Carl. A new report out today finds that while Donald Trump was president, his businesses raked in more than $7.8 million from 20 different foreign governments. The biggest amount came from China, which poured some $5.5 million into Trump's properties, including Trump Tower, where a Chinese bank had rented office space since 2008, something Trump bragged about as a candidate. I love China. The biggest bank in the world is from China. You know where their United States headquarters is located? In this building, in Trump Tower. The report, produced by congressional Democrats on the House Oversight Committee and based largely on reams of documents from Trump's former accountants, shows how countries spent hundreds of thousands of dollars in Trump hotels, like Trump International in Washington, D.C., which opened just weeks before he was elected president. Right behind China, Saudi Arabia. That government spent more than $615,000 in two Trump hotels while he was president. The report notes these payments were made while these governments were promoting specific foreign policy goals with the Trump administration and even at times with President Trump himself. Democrats accused Trump of violating the Constitution by, quote, elevating his personal financial interests and the policy priorities of corrupt foreign powers over the American public interest. Tonight, the Trump Organization is pushing back. Eric Trump denying his father's business interests had an impact on his actions as president and claiming the company donated all profits from foreign governments back to the U.S. Treasury. Democrats say their report uh, demonstrates the hypocrisy of Republicans in Congress for threatening impeachment of President Biden over unfounded allegations that he profited from his son Hunter's foreign business dealings while ignoring the documented evidence that Trump's businesses took in millions of dollars from foreign governments while he was president. David? John Carl, live in Washington. John, thank you. We turn now to the Israel-Hamas war, and we have new reporting tonight on a daring and secret operation freeing a Palestinian mother and her American brother-in-law inside Gaza. How many Americans remain there? Martha Raddatz in the region again tonight. Tonight, news of a daring secret operation that freed a Palestinian mother and her American brother-in-law who were caught in the fighting inside Gaza. 44-year-old Zara Skaik and Farid Skaik, a U.S. Palestinian citizen, escaped Gaza on New Year's Eve. She is the mother and he the uncle of a member of the U.S. military, reportedly serving in South Korea. The clandestine mission in the war-torn region was coordinated by the U.S., Israel and Egypt, according to U.S. officials. Officials say the U.S. military played no role in the actual rescue, but did tell the IDF where to find the individuals. It's the only known operation to extract an American citizen and close family members since the Israeli-Hamas war began. 
The family had been fleeing airstrikes and trying to make their way to the border since the conflict began, but they just couldn't make it because of the heavy fighting until the Israelis helped them out. But there are still some 300 Americans and permanent legal residents who remain in Gaza. And of course, David, as many as seven Americans being held hostage. David. And we'll continue to report on them. Martha, thank you. Back here in the U.S. in the harrowing scene in a Las Vegas courtroom, a defendant lunging at the judge who had just sentenced him. Here's Kena Whitworth. Hey. Oh, 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 hey. oh. This is the moment a defendant who had just been sentenced attacked a Las Vegas judge. Hey. And tonight, that man is now behind bars, facing over a dozen charges, including extortion and battery. Hey, I'm good. Are you all right? I just my head into the wall. Redden appearing in court Wednesday, a repeat offender. He had pled guilty to attempted battery with substantial bodily harm. The 30-year-old telling Judge Mary Kay Huthis he didn't think he deserved another trip to prison. I feel that, like, I shouldn't be, like, sent to prison for a second time. The judge reminding Redden of his lengthy criminal record. Three felonies, a gross, nine misdemeanors, multiple DVs. Got a lot going on, sir. Redden saying he was working to turn his life around, but Judge Holthus denying his request for probation. I appreciate that, but I think it's time that he gets a taste of something else because I just can't with that history. In accordance with the laws of state of Nevada, this court. Oh, Redden then leaping over the bench, landing on top of the judge and brawling with court officers and attorneys. Minutes later, Judge Holthus standing up. She's shaken up as most people would be. A couple of bruises, but I'm very, very happy that she's okay. And David, a court martial was also injured in that attack. Redden refusing to show up to court today to face these additional charges. He has another hearing set for next week. David. Kena Whitworth, we're just glad she's okay tonight. Kena, thank you. When we come back, the new warning tonight involving the popular diabetes drugs now being used for weight loss. And we remember a beloved star of the Disney classic. What a voice. Tonight, a health warning from the makers of two popular drugs used for weight loss. Eli Lilly now urging people to stop using Manjaro and ZepBound for, quote, cosmetic weight loss. They say the drugs are designed strictly to treat diabetes and obesity. Patients are now being told to use the drugs only with a prescription and as directed by your doctor. When we come back tonight, we remember an actress and star of a Disney classic. To the index, and we learned today that actress Glynis Johns has died at 100, best known for her role in the Disney classic, Mary Poppins. Cast off the shackles of yesterday. Shoulder to Mrs. Shoulder Winifred Banks, Oscar nominated and a Tony winner, the first to sing Stephen Sondheim's Send in the Clowns, celebrating the storied career of Glennis Johns tonight at 100. When we come back here, the golden retriever who fell 350 feet over a cliff, the Coast Guard and what they did, and the video of Leo now just in tonight. Finally tonight here, the golden retriever, Leo. Now safe and sound, and the rescue team, America Strong. Tonight, Ecola State Park outside Portland, Oregon, the incredible story of Leo, the three-year-old golden retriever. Out for a walk with his owners, Alexa Ferry and Cody Cimenti, when all of a sudden he darted ahead and he fell down a 350-foot cliff. He survived, but Leo was injured and stranded. The U.S. Coast Guard was called in. They got to work. 35 feet. The team helicoptering to the dog and lowering a rescuer down. Conducting a uh, hoist evolution of a dog. Finding Leo and slowly approaching him. Yeah, I think we're all right here. Petting him, keep him calm. Then putting Leo into the basket and lifting him to safety. You are clear left, my friend. Flying him back to firm ground, carrying him out of the helicopter. Here he is right here. Take a look out your window. Reuniting Leo with his family. That family hugging the rescuer. Oh, hug. Hug oh. Over, hug. Rushing Leo to the vet, treated for a broken jaw. Tonight, Leo's family sending us this video of Leo now home and on the men tonight. They've started a GoFundMe for his medical bills, telling us we are so thankful Leo is alive and home recovering. We have so much appreciation for the first responders and Coast Guard who rescued Leo. Without them, he would not be here with us. And right here tonight, Good evening, David. The Coast Guard helicopter pilot, Lieutenant Michael Travers, on why they helped rescue Leo. Any opportunity that we have to do what we do best and train for every day is a great day, and it's even better when we are able to reunite a family member with its loved ones. We're so glad that Leo is home tonight, and way to go to the Coast Guard. I'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.
Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast.